Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And it's been over two years since I shot a video about the mixed greens blend. And the last one I did was just showing me mixing it up. And I actually haven't mixed any since 2018 because I've been dehydrating my herbs and just keeping them in separate jars for the most part. And one of the reason I haven't mixed them all together is because, well, I still have mixed greens going back to 2017. And even though I use them quite a bit because I get a lot. So I wanted to talk about, this is just one way you can make the most of your garden. And I figure why not get this out now before people start putting in their gardens so you can start planning ahead as your things come in. And also to be able to add the most nutrition to your food throughout the rest of the year. Because as we know, for most of us, we can't grow kale year round or many of the other great greens that are just nutrient dense and so how do we get that through in our meals throughout the rest of the year and one of the ways you do that is by dehydrating up your various greens and i'm going to be listing off just some of the greens that you can dehydrate and hopefully you can take that idea and run with it but i'll also be talking about the many ways that i use it so how i do this is as the different greens that i'll be talking about start coming in because they're all going to be at different times i start dehydrating them right away and then i'll put them in their separate jars like right here i have a jar of dandelion greens so this is the leaves from the dandelions usually the first thing you're going to harvest is the flowers in the early spring then later in late spring as the leaves start to get bigger you can start harvesting those leaves and then more will just keep coming in and so i've got i got several jars of just dandelion grains and then nettle that's another one i have several jars of that so one of the reasons i keep them in their separate jars for a while is so in case i want to just separate it out and use it for something different i like to have at least some jars that are only this thing so i have quite a number of jars from of sting and nettle going back to 2019 since i didn't mix anything together in 2019 but also so that i can kind of figure out my ratios i like to have a basic ratio of certain greens to certain greens and that is nothing that anyone that's watching this video would have to stick to it's just going to depend on what you're growing how much you have and what you're looking at for the most importance that you want in your diet to suit your various needs now for me having a lot of sting and nettle in there is really important because my main reason of growing the sting and nettle was to help with our thyroid so a lot of you know we took ourselves off the thyroid over eight years ago i'm thinking it might be close to nine now and because i had learned that sting and nettle is really good for nourishing and boosting the thyroid gland uh, that was the number one reason why I started growing nettle. But nettle is very high in nutrients, very good for many other things. I have a video just on that that I'll link to in the description box down below so you can check that out. Dandelion leaves because it's just another one of those greens that is just so incredible. It's packed with all kinds of nutrients and it's just good for your overall health. And so dandelion greens is one of the top three. And then the one of the other ones is which I don't have a jar of them out here, are the grape leaves simply because I always have lots of grape leaves, but they have a lot of good nutrient benefits as well. Now, I do also have videos on dandelion just in general where I break down the benefits of the flowers, the benefits of the leaves, and the benefits of the roots. But the whole plant, the stems and everything, are really excellent for just overall health. They have medicinal properties of all kinds. And what I found is I love to eat the stems just straight off the plant, real fresh and crisp. That's probably my favorite part to eat fresh, but I will also eat the leaves fresh. But to dehydrate up a bunch to get me through the year so I can add it to various foods and to make teas out of so we can keep getting all the nutrients in there. That's one way to do it. And also to save for those of you who are into buying lots of supplements supplements aren't bad we do take some around here like vitamin d is one of the top because we live in such a very dark place we don't we're, we don't get a lot of sun here so vitamin d is really important to us and so we do take those but i do try to limit i used to be the kind of person to take handfuls of supplements every morning 
but then start learning, okay, what are better ways? I mean, when we get our, our nutrients in the foods that they came in, their nutrients are made to work together, just like calcium and magnesium and, and even potassium. These things all work together and should be taken together in their proper amounts and that's given to us naturally in these various foods and so finding a way to preserve these things and take them in that way is going to be much better than taking separate supplements such as a vitamin b12 over here or a magnesium tablet over there or calcium over there it's better to get them in their natural form in the foods they come in naturally so that is one of the reasons why i do this so now let me list off just list off the main things that I usually dehydrate plus a few other things I recommend things I'm going to probably start doing and things I've done and why I don't put add them to my mixed greens anymore so again I already mentioned the top three which is the nettle the dandelion leaves and the grape leaves some others I add quite a bit to are the strawberry leaves and this can also apply to blackberry leaves and raspberry leaves pretty much any berry leaf as long as you know it's edible and it's safe it's going to be packed with a lot of great nutrients as well and those kind of things are best to start picking them a little bit here and there before the berries start coming in but you don't want to take too much because your berries are going to need those leaves so you got to be careful i do have a video i think i did about the strawberry leaves and and harvesting them and using them and their benefits that i'll link to that down below as well some other things are in a lot of your different root vegetables like your carrots your beets your turnips and your rutabagas all the leaves on those are edible and highly nutritious so i will collect those i do the same thing i always leave some leaves on the top just so there's something out there collecting the sunlight and then take the excess and then dehydrate those up i also dehydrate up kale and red mustard these are a couple of things that usually do pretty good in my garden now some things that i've done in the past i don't do anymore because i use them for other things or like marshmallow leaves and i've got a ton of marshmallow now i get lots of marshmallow leaves roots and flowers so marshmallow leaves are very good for you you can there and they have a very mild flavor so they can be used in many ways uh, lambs ear you can do and let's see I believe I might I think I do have some in this blend it looks like I do I'll get a picture and hopefully you can see better than what you're you'll be able to see in this particular setting and you'll see all different colors in there so again this is from 2018 i did dry dry up a bunch of woolly lambs here and tried make, putting it in the mixed green what i do now is i keep it separate and i'll add it to teas another thing that has a very mild flavor but is is wonderful in teas so i also have a video on woolly lambs here i'm gonna be linking to you a lot of videos down below and its benefits and many uses and then another one are echinacea leaves echinacea leaves are highly beneficial and nutrient dense they're tasty too so you can if you have a lot of those you can dehydrate up and add to your mixed greens blend I don't do that because I save my echinacea leaves to go into a couple of different medicinal type things I make. One of them being my cough, cold, and flu remedy. You can also use the roots, but I uh, I have yet to dig up any of the roots of my echinacea plants. And then another one would be nasturtium leaves. Again, something I don't add to my mixed greens because those get reserved for using in my homemade antibiotic. Now, a couple things I plan on adding this next year chickweed there's another good one and chicory now that i've got chicory growing my chicory I, I had one that just got massive this last year but i didn't want to do anything to it i usually like to let my herbs like that my perennials get well established before i get heavy-handed in harvesting anything off of them so this come coming year that will be one of the things i'll be adding so now how do i use them well first let me give you another option you can do now i after I dehydrate, and you'll see, it. I can link to my dehydrating video uh, playlist from 2020, and I'll have another playlist coming out here in 2021 as I start dehydrating things so you can see what I'm doing as I'm doing it. But 
When I dehydrate them, I just flake them up with my fingers like this and then put them in the jars. You can also powder them if you want. You can make a mixed greens powder and that might be better if it's something you want to add to a green smoothie. And so there's one option. I personally haven't done that because I like using mine for other things and which is also the reason why I like to keep them in their flakes rather than in a powder because I will add these things to dinners quite a bit. Now I can't remember in the moussaka recipe that I did if I remembered to add the mixed greens in that but normally that's something I would do is I would add a handful, a big pinch or a handful, depending on what I'm making, of the mixed greens. It could be a pinch this big or it could be a just a whole handful. It depends on the size of what I'm making and what it is. Usually when I'm adding to soups, I'll put in a bigger pinch of it. The nice thing about dehydrating stuff like this, especially if you have a family that doesn't like kale, doesn't like the taste of dandelion greens and all that kind of stuff, is dehydrating it makes the flavor more mild and this gives you a way that you can add it into foods where it's pretty much undetectable, especially if you put it in as a powder. But when I'm putting it into dishes, I like to be able to see those pieces of green in there. And so that's one of the reasons I like to keep it in a flake form. Also because I will use this in making teas. And so uh, I don't want a powder when I'm making a tea. So I do have a video on a nutrient dense tea that I will link to down below if you're curious to see just one of the blends you can use this in and using it in a blend that has a lot of flavor to it anyway is going to help uh, cover up some of that green flavor if you don't like that. So some other things I do with this is I'll put it in my any of my Italian sauces, whether I'm using it for pizza, spaghetti, raviolis, lasagna. I'll put it in even my fettuccine sauces, my gravies that I use like for biscuit and gravy, turkey a la king or chicken a la king, depending on what I'm making, any kind of gravy really. I'll put a pinch or so into any of those. I'll even add it to meat things. So let's say I'm making hamburger patties or I'm making breakfast sausages or meatballs or even meatloaf. So I'll add those into the meat. So anything I can get it in where the flavor is going to be undetectable but also give us the nutrients that are in those, it goes in there. It's nothing I, I've ever really added to anything sweet, but I'm guessing you could probably add a little bit to some of your sweet breads, like, you know, maybe a pumpkin bread or a banana bread, especially if it's in a bread that has a lot of flavor so it doesn't conflict. Mostly the dehydrated herbs don't, but as I said, if you, I, I did have something I made one time where I just put in a big massive amount and I could taste it. It wasn't bad, but then it's like, okay, I can taste the greenness of the mixed greens in whatever it was I made. Oh, another thing I just remembered, of course, is chili. I added into my chilies and to the beans that I make for the beans and cornbread. So again, any main dish I make, I can't even think of any offhand that I make that I wouldn't add the mixed greens to. Even when I'm making like the the almond chicken, I make the gravy for that, or the orange chicken, I put a pinch or two in there. And it just blends really well with just about anything you can think to add it to. Again, your amounts are gonna vary, and also the different herbs that you use or greens that you use in there and how strong the flavor is could have a say in it. So what I do, like I said, I have, like this is a 2017, it was a jar that I had opened up when I needed to refill this. So these jars I keep in the kitchen in my cabinet. So the, I have a lot of different herbs I keep in jars like these. And you're probably wondering what kind of jar this is. Well, quite a number of years back when we were in Costco, we seen they had these peaches in jars and I loved these jars. I liked the size and the shape of them. They're narrower than your regular canning jar and they got a slightly more square shape so that when you're putting them in the cabinet I can fit more of these into my kitchen cabinet and they fit in there a lot better than having a bunch of jars like this and they're just a little bit smaller too. So we were buying a bunch of those peaches just so I could have these jars for storing my herbs. So what I do as you can see this is on almost empty is when I get to the bottom of this jar, I go back to my pantry, I grab the next jar in line or like one like this that's already opened and I started working through and I just top my jar off 
hopefully all this will fit in there. I think it should. It should still all in. There we go. So now I just finished up that jar. I still have another one here from 2017. I'm not even sure if that's the last one. And then I have all my 2018 to go through as well. And then there we go. So this becomes a jar I work through and I work from whenever I'm in here cooking in the kitchen and making whatever it is that I'm making. I'm sure there's many other great ways that you could use your mixed greens blend, whether it be in the flaked form like I prefer it or in the powder form. Oh yes, and I've even used this in making like a vitamin extract. I sometimes will make a vitamin mineral extracts and this is one of the things I will add it's like the number one thing and then extract it in either vinegar or wine or whatever it is you want to use as your solvent even honey and water would be a great extract and just let it sit in there and extract and then that's something you can take in the mornings uh, it, you could even just leave the herbs in there and you can take that as a supplement and I, I should get back into doing that in fact that's something I could even again I keep finding new things to add to my honey infused garlic so right here I've got the black seed red pepper and the garlic I didn't put cinnamon and clove in this one the black seed the honey's already was already fairly dark but the black seeds making it even darker so that should be a, a nice healthy thing to take but you could add your mixed greens to something like that as well any way that you can think of that you can get those good nutrients uh, into your diet into your family's diet as well as making the most of your garden by using up those different greens and some of those excess leaves you have on your berries and your grapes okay well I hope you enjoyed this video and it gave you a good idea of so you can start looking ahead when you're when you're starting to grow your various things out there way to make the most of your garden and get the most of all those nutrients throughout the whole year all right well thanks for watching take care and God bless